you can see, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas as the Terranea Resort kicks off the holiday season with the annual tree lighting. Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo, joined by Liz Brown Swanson. And Liz, it's the happiest time of the year, the most fun time of the year, and the busiest time of the year. I'm always happy when I'm with you, especially at this time of the year, because we try to do a little shopping together. Of course we do. A little baking. A little kiss. Yes. into the whole time, the spirit of the holiday. That's right. And part of that spirit, of course, is about giving. So I've spent some time, Maria, with the Salvation Army here in Rancho Palos Verdes looking at all the great work they're doing. We're going to share that in the show. That's right. And then I did a little shopping at one of our favorite gift shops, and we're going to see that later. But right now, we are here at the Terranea Resort. And when we come back, we're going to be joined by one of our favorite people. Don't go away. We're here at the beautiful Terranea Resort, being joined by one of our favorite people here on the peninsula, the Community Relations Director, Gay Van Sands. We love seeing you. We do, Gay. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. So, I just saw you at the tree lighting, one of the many traditions here, ninth annual, you lit that beautiful tree. Yeah, we did. It was a really <laughs> fun event, as always. Lots of community involvement. I think we had 120 total performance, so it was, interesting but we did it and everybody had a great time we so. won't ask you how many lights are on there yeah i know right do you know do you know i don't know maybe i should count them <laughs> i have no the, idea on the break she'll be counting them yeah yes. i'll go count the lights. <laughs> okay you guys are doing such a phenomenal job decorating with the gingerbread house and the tree and just all of the things here that really feel like christmas you must have a lot of elves to get this all done quickly we have a great team, of course, and um, it's not only fun for our visitors, but it's fun for us, too, as a team, to see everything. So it brings everyone together. We actually do have elves in Kids Club. Yes. We do um, elf tuck-ins, so we'll go to guest rooms and read stories to their children. So we literally do have elves dressed up. Um, and we have a special guest this year who moved in for the month of December, the Elf on the Shelf. So We're all familiar with the Elf on the Shelf. We started a new tradition and we hide the elf every day and put a clue in the lobby. And so we have children running around trying to find the elf. So we'll see if you can find it later. During break, we're going to be looking for the elf. We're going to look yeah. for the elf. She's yeah. called Terra. Okay, oh, I like that. Come Perfect. up with the name. Terra Nea. It's better than it's better than Nea. Yeah. This is true. This yeah. is very Terra's good. So yeah, she's she's hiding every day. All right. In addition to the elf on the shelf, the gingerbread house has to be one of the most spectacular things anywhere on this hill. And I know we caught up with Chef Perry who's gonna tell us all about that and more. Let's take a look. Well, this is a great time of the year for us here at Terra Nea. I mean, it's bringing out all the flavors of the season and it starts nothing but gingerbread. Yes. Yeah? Not only the gingerbread house, which we will show you a little later, but also all the goodies that comes with it. The gingerbread man, the gingerbread lady, and also all kinds of gingerbread de delicacy. We also have a cupcakes. Our cupcakes are decorated pretty much with all the flavors of uh, the season. The caramel, the sea salt that we use from the property also. But we incorporate the flavors of the season into all those, all those ingredients. And... Uh, also, I'm holding a, is a panettone. The panettone is a traditional Italian uh, dessert and bread that we introduce, and we're going to give this at the, uh, on the 24th. For everybody that stays here at the Terranea, they will be receiving this in their room as a complimentary gift from us to them. Yeah, you're talking to an Italian girl, so I'm very familiar with that, Chef. You are familiar with the panettone. Of course, yes. You can't go out without a panettone at the end of the year. Behind us is an amazing macaroon tower. Tell us about that. We built our macaroon tower as a centerpiece to finalize the decorations of all the delicacy underneath. And the macaroons are personally handmade. They're brushed with 24 karat gold, some of them, and all different flavors and colors, which makes a nice hooray of celebration right there, topped off with a nice bow on top. I think it's it's, it's a nice accent to give to the celebration of the holiday. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so beautiful. Now getting back to the gingerbread house, which is always just spectacular. Everybody comes to see it. You and I talked for a moment about that earlier, that you say you change it up a little bit every year. Tell us about that. Every year we try to make it a little different gingerbread house, a different concept. We want it to be more traditional, more colonial this year. So of course you got to have the train going around there all the time because the kids admire that that aspect and, and of the, the adults too for sure especially the adults actually the adults are the ones they touch a lot 
you're not supposed to. Yeah, you try to tell the kids don't touch, but it's actually the adults, the ones they pick. So this year, Gingerbread House, it took about two months actually to build with a lot of collaboration with uh, a lot of staff members, with the leadership of the pastry team. It's a lot of different intricate items they go on and detailed items they go from sugar, poured sugar, blown sugar, to pastillage work. All those terms are pastry terms. And some of you don't understand all those terms, but if you come over, you admire the, the beauty of it. It's really great. Yeah, it really is spectacular, always amazing. Now, every year, we talk about family traditions, things that you eat during the holidays that you probably never have any other time. What are some of your family traditions that you have every year, Chef? Every year has got to be this. <laughs> it's got to be the panettone. <laughs> yes. And I love torone. We have a torone on display under the tree that you can take home. And we have some fudge with the sea salt under the tree also that you can take home from here. Many amazing things that we have right here at the Terranea Resort that make the holidays special. Chef, thank you so much for spending some time with us and showing us things that we all want to eat, that's for sure. Thank you so much and happy holidays to you all. That's a lot of ginger and a lot of house. Yes, and a lot of bread, that's for sure. <laughs> sure is. And what sure is. there is a lot of here at Terranea is shopping opportunities yes, for the holidays. Talk about what's here for residents to come and do all their holiday shopping right here. Yes. Okay, well, of course, we have the stores. So yes. the stores are always here. We have Morea, we have Point Discovery, and the store at the spa. So lots of gift opportunities there. The easiest is the gift card. Yep. Spend anywhere you like here at Terranea. And then as you get closer to the holidays, of course, you can bring people for dinner. We have a lot going on. We have even Christmas to go. You can come Christmas Day and pick up your prime rib or your turkey and give somebody the gift of not having to cook. That would be pretty cool. Right? That's like an amazing gift, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as Christmas is over, we roll into our gala, which this year is a masquerade. And that's, of course, New Year's Eve. So. There's something happening all the time. I was going to say, and one thing about giving the gift of, you can give the gift of time here. That's right. You know, this is a place to come with your family, yep. take a hike. Just talk about what's here on the grounds. You don't have to come here and spend money, although I know you want them to, but you can come and just enjoy time with your family. Absolutely, yes. We have an open door policy. We always have. We've always said, treat us as your own backyard. So come take a walk. It can be a guided walk if you want to contact the activities desk, but you can come and look around on your own. Maybe catch a few whales passing by. It's that time of year. Um, any of the restaurants, of course. And then for a real treat, why not go to the spa? That's got to be <laughs> something there. to was, look. I was going to bring that one up, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. my favorite place. Yes. Yeah. Sunset by the pool at the spa. That's, that's it that's for me. That's coming at the end of the show. Show. Yeah, of yeah. course. Now, okay. Gay, something that you and I talked about, we did a show earlier in the year about experiences here at Terranea and amazing things that I th think are great gift ideas. So tell us about the things that people can do, residents or guests that come here. Yes, I think that's an important distinction. We need to let residents know that to do a Terranea experience, a Terranea activity, you do not have to be staying here. So we have kayaking, we have paddle boarding, getting a bit cold for that maybe, um, although if you're hardy, why not? But we've also introduced a lot of new activities. We have wreath making, we have sign painting, we have all kinds of painting by the sea, and we discussed that we will serve wine too, so that yes. makes it more fun. I'm a fan of um, full moon yoga. Yoga. Full moon yeah. yoga once a month, yes. yes. And I believe full moon yoga is the 1st of January. I, I need to check, but there's one starting, if not New Year's Eve, then on the 1st. So that's coming up. Um, and then in terms of activities, check back with us all the time because we're growing new ones. We're hoping to bring some cooking lessons in in the new year. Great. So we're constantly looking to grow our menu of options. And for all the millennials, you even have someone that teaches them how to do selfies. Yes, we do. Better <laughs> selfies, which yes, Liz and I need do. to learn how to do better. So. Yeah, we have a photo walk, which you can reserve with us. Again, a great cool. gift if you're if you're looking to think of something different. A lot of selfies by that big tree back there. That's right. Yeah. Now, okay, there's so many traditions at Christmas time. I know for my family, we do a big dinner at my brother's house on Christmas Eve. Liz, what do you do with your family? Well, on uh, Christmas Eve, we always have lobster. Okay. That's our that's our tradition. And my my kids, we we have to do the advent calendar. Even though they're out of college, they said to me, Mom, where's the advent calendar in November? Like, <laughs> just to mail it then. And then just being together, and we do a lot of baking. Mm -hmm, for make sure. Greek cookies and things like that. What do you do, Gay? 
Well, being English, of course, we, we, we eat a lot of English things. Um, I think one thing that everybody here thinks is really fun and I buy for the team is Christmas crackers. I don't know if you do those, yes. but they're fun things that you pull on Christmas Day and they have silly hats and silly jokes and novelties inside. So Christmas crackers are about as English as you get. Christmas pudding, uh -huh. that mince pies. Pudding. Um, very similar to, to American traditions, but I'm actually going to London this year, so oh, nice. I will be truly English this year. Absolutely. An extra serving of figgy pudding for you. Totally. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's so fun. I mean, I, and I think, I know she's the baker in the group. I am. I so. like to bake. I, I love the cupcakes decorated, and my mom always bakes like Italian goodies and things like that. So everybody kind of has something. But I know in addition to that, Terrine is all about giving, and you have so many worthwhile charities. Tell us about that. Yeah, we're very proud to be able to give back. And I think it's important when you are in a place like this and we're also privileged to be able to give back. So as a team, we have just collected an enormous number of toys. In fact, we're going to film it, I think. We've got seven, yes, yes. seven overflowing boxes with Toys for Tots. We've also done a lot this year with Habitat for Humanity. And we invited, Liz was there at the tree lighting, a family who are about to go into a Habitat for Humanity home to light the tree. They brought their two boys with their magic wands wow. and so um, we did that. We also did a lot this year for the cancer support community and raised a lot of money which we gave to them. So it's an ongoing thing. Um, Chefs Against Hunger, any food left over now goes to the LA mission. So we, we do a lot and, and we try very hard to make sure that there are opportunities for everybody to be involved. How do you select the charities? There's so many worthwhile charities out there. Well, it tends to be something that is national, wide appeal, like our birdie, our breast cancer, Terranea turns pink. We want to do something that touches the maximum number of people possible, um, often something fairly local. And sometimes it's something that somebody has a personal interest in. So if one of our staff says, please do this, or in fact, it was one of our staff who started the Birdies for Breast Cancer golf tournament in memory of one of his family. Um, Toys for Tots we've done from the very beginning because our then general manager, Sean Jervis, was a Marine. So there's always a, a tie. Um, I tend to remember them. Many people don't, but right. yeah, there's always a reason. So. And Terry Hack is um, on the board of Habitat for Humanity. So there you go. It, it, it's full circle. One thing leads to the other. It does. It does. There is so much giving going on. We always appreciate you giving us your time Absolutely. and letting us come here, be part of the Terranea family and experience. So I just want to wish you a happy holiday because we've happy got. Holiday. This is a part of our tradition for our PV to come here. Yeah. And yeah. happy yeah. holidays from everybody at Terranea to all of you. Please come see us. You're welcome anytime. And Absolutely. As Gay was mentioning, all the giving going on, there is so much. This is the time of year that people think to give back. And one of the ways we know we're in the holiday season is we see those Salvation Army, the red, the kettles the are out, the bells are ringing. Mm -hmm. And coming up now in the show, I had the time to spend some time with some local Salvation Army volunteers and take a look at the great work they're doing right here in our community. With their silver bells and red kettles, the Salvation Army troops are out for the holidays collecting donations on the peninsula and around the world. For more than 150 years, the Christian organization has brought both physical and spiritual assistance to those in need. This year, they served more than 30 million people in the U.S. alone. When I see a red kettle, I put a dollar in. Well, the Salvation Army has several locations in the South Bay, in Redondo Beach and in Torrance and in San Pedro, where we have some of our cadets that are stationed right now that are helping to assist. And they're helping in various ways through um, an angel tree at the Lama Mall. Um, you'll see the kettles that are out that are helping to provide uh, men and women to work those locations to bring money in, which helps us to purchase toys, to purchase food, to provide to families who are in desperate need this holiday season. Major John Brackenberry is the assistant principal at the Salvation Army College for Officer Training in Rancho Palos Verdes on Hawthorne Boulevard. The beautiful campus next to RPV City Hall is one of four Salvation Army colleges in the country. Well, the Salvation Army is grateful to be a part of this community. We have been since the early 70s. Um, and it's a beautiful location. But what we'd like to let people know is that this is 
a campus, a college campus, to train men and women to become Salvation Army officers. And what that means, again, is to, um, to be the individuals who will go into a community and meet the needs of the people in that community, whether it's through um, social services and helping families with food, rent assistance, um, providing Christmas assistance with this time of the year, or also providing individuals spiritual and counseling needs and cares and concerns we're there to help. For this project, we're getting ready for the Bell Shelter Client Christmas Party. It's the Salvation Army's homeless shelter in the city of Bell, and we have put on their Christmas party and dinner for the last seven years. And this year, we will be serving probably about 450 clients at the party, so we're making little favor boxes for them. Well, we have about 80 employees that are on this campus and those are support staff, administrative staff, groundskeepers. Um, but primarily, this is our training college where we train men and women to become Salvation Army officers. So we have classrooms, we have administrative offices, we have a dining room for them, and there's apartments here for their families because this is where they will come and live for 18 months. Right now, the students are on Christmas break, out working in the field, some cadets assisting at the Salvation Army Sage House in San Pedro, an adult daycare center on Bandini Street. We are an adult daycare program. Um, we are licensed for 30 individuals. The people that come here, we call them our members. They are people from this community who unfortunately may be suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, they come from all walks of life. We have so many different diverse people that come here, but they're basically coming here to have a sense of purpose. They come here to make friends, and we're very social here, and they have a lot of fun every day. Came up upon the Sage House about a year ago, and since then they have been, they're just absolutely wonderful. They allow me to bring my mom here. Uh, they uh, occupy her time, which allows me to be able to get out and do the things that I need to take care of. My mom seems to be a much better person because of this place, you know, which helps me as well. Sage House is a, um, a wonderful program of the Salvation Army. Uh, began back in 1996 and um, uh, we celebrate our, our, our folks who come here uh, every day and uh, just a, a wonderful time with them. Our staff is uh, wonderful and uh, they provide a, a variety of uh, programs or entertainment for them. At the Sage House, families find comfort and joy at the holidays and all year round. They know the Salvation Army is there for them with the support of the community. And Peninsula residents can help out more by dropping off clothes and goods at the Donation Center at 30840 Hawthorne Boulevard, right next to the college. They can donate just about everything. Uh, clothes, furniture, household items. The Salvation Army is in every zip code in the nation. And so we're there to help meet needs. There are thousands of people within the South Bay, many individuals that we probably wouldn't even stop and think about. But the Army is there to help meet those needs. Uh, we have been in this in the South Bay community for decades and will continue to do so because that's what we're called by God to do. Well, Liz and I have now transported ourselves over here to Trump National Golf Club. We are joined by the general manager, our girl, Lily Amini. And Lily, it is officially the holidays now because Liz and I are sitting here with you in front of this beautiful Christmas tree. Happy I know. Holidays. Happy holidays <laughs> to the both of you. I know it seems just like yesterday you guys were here and we were celebrating this momentous occasion. It's always a great time when the lobby's decorated the way that it is and sitting in front of this Christmas tree, it's always an exciting experience for all of us. You know, you only have a little bit of time between Thanksgiving and the holiday of Christmas to get this together. How long does it take? It takes about two full days. Okay. Um, we don't want to get in the way of anyone also and it's not just this area that's decorated, it's also our grand ballroom and upstairs in our Trump's room. So it's an effort but we get it done. You feel the holiday magic here, yes. obviously, but all year round, I feel like this place sparkles. It does. Aww, and one thank of the you. shining points for me is to make my way right around the corner <laughs> to the gift shop. That's I right. It's, it's one of Liz's favorite places shop. here. <laughs> it is. It's multifaceted, you know, so you don't have to be a golfer to enjoy the pro shop at all. So you have apparel, you have um, flatware, you have glassware, you have everything you could possibly imagine. Um, so it's, it's multidimensional. I'm glad that you were able to go in and check it out. It's actually already shopped today. It's going to be in someone's stocking. There you go. Uh -oh. 
Good, good, good. And everyone enjoys it from our, you know, local client base to our international client base, as you can imagine, with the name. Yes. And, oh, yeah, it's crazy. I, I was going to say, with that name Trump, mm -hmm. Maybe a few supporters might want to buy some things to support that. Yes, more than a few. Uh, more than a few. So, yeah, we have, again, the international client base that we have. It's for them to be on the West Coast and to see a Trump property. It's, it's pretty dynamic um, because not only are they in Los Angeles, but they're also coming into the uh, peninsula and they get to see the beautiful views and they also get to see the Trump name displayed almost everywhere you go in this lobby. And I think it's a really good surprise for them to see how much we embrace the name and how much we love this property. Well, you were saying to us that you know been with this with Trump National for 13 years. Yes. That's amazing. You started when you were five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just a baby. And, exactly. Uh, and, and so, but you've seen everything grow, and especially yeah. now with your former boss being at the White House, it's definitely had an impact. You're busy. It's crazy. Um, just like yeah. I said, you know, just the international client base, the local client base. We have some many, many, many local supporters, and they're continuing to come back breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you know, spend their hard-earned money on the holiday season as well here. So. It's, it's a great dynamic and just to see new faces and old faces and I think it's just fantastic to have everyone here. It's, it's great, it's what beautiful. I think, what I think is really fun too is that so many times you come in and locals are here for lunch, oh, yeah. they're here for dinner all the time, they're, they're hanging out watching Monday Night Football. This is really a family property. It is and I think people love the fact they just drive in, they have the same familiar faces that they see every day and it's just a very comfortable location for them. You know, it's the beauty of the place but it's also the consistency in the food is the consistency in the service and they just leave here just relaxed and they get to you know bring whatever they didn't finish home we have pretty large portions yes, of food <laughs> so they love that aspect of it too and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time when they're here in all aspects of, of, of their experience and of course yeah. the golf experience oh, yes no better place on earth to golf no right. unobstructed views everywhere that's right. and so the golf business is big if people out there you know that's also another gift you know, oh, yeah. gift of golf definitely and that's that's a great uh, point is that you know you come here not only do you dine you golf and if you don't golf you can also have some golf instruction so a gift card is always a great thing we I mean it's a biggest seller during this time of year because they can come out and just enjoy the full experience of this location but golf obviously is is the most amazing part of this uh, property you know it, it takes a long time to make sure that the golf conditions are top-notch to drag everyone in and to spend their their money so it's great and with the weather being beautiful almost all the time people always want to golf I know it that's and that's another beauty of, of where we are you know it's it's California so we don't have downtime there's nothing uh, you know anything like that over here on the East Coast you know some of the clubs are closed for a few months here we're open 365 days a year so we're working and, all the time and that means Lily's working 365 <laughs> days a year we have to kidnap her and get her out of here sometime it's true it's true I <laughs> please kidnap me <laughs> yeah here. yeah yeah, yeah. What happens here in the New Year. yep New Year's Eve so we want to make sure that the staff is able to go home and celebrate with their families so we celebrate our New Year's um, East Coast time so at uh, 9 p.m. we go ahead and make it a great <laughs> announcement and we celebrate and we always have a great crowd that night again it's not something that you're gonna have to wait in lines or anything like that you know we make sure that everyone gets that experience and, and they have a fantastic time everyone gets a champagne um, glass of champagne champagne toast and they're ready to go yeah. Now, Lily, one of the most amazing things at the holidays is, of course, the food. We yeah. have different kinds of chocolate, different kinds of drinks, different kinds of, of entrees. What is your favorite thing to sort of eat during the holidays? I have the biggest sweet tooth. So for oh, me, yeah. it's dessert. I know, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's the dessert. But we also have the holiday tea, so that's also a great thing. And you get some sweets, some savory, a little bit of both. Um, but this time, it's always when somebody brings me chocolate or somebody <laughs> bring, brings me cupcakes or cookies. It's gone within, like, um, 30 seconds. There so, go. yeah, there it's perfect. Go. I love it. Well, Liz, I can honestly say this is now my favorite part of the show. Look at the table and look at what we have in front of us. It's incredible. Of course, I keep saying I'm glad she's holding the microphone because I'm going to hold the utensil so that we taking those away from you. get to dig in. And it's so great to be here with the chef from Trump National. Look at this mas these masterpieces. Amazing. Tell us what we have in front of us right now. Well, it's great to have you guys again, and Thank it's great you. to see you. I'm glad you're you're uh, awing and ooing over the, the <laughs> new uh, uh, features that we have here at Trump National. Uh, mm -hmm. These additions are for our new fall and winter menu. Okay. Uh, I kind of kept it. Uh, it's our first kind of sort of menu change. Okay. Uh, right before the holiday season. Uh, so I sort of adapted to the season itself. So we have hearty dishes in front of us mm -hmm. uh, that coincide with the cool weather, right? 
Each comfort, one looks like they could serve like three people it, each plate. At least, yes. yes. Our, our portions are a little bit hearty, but yes. that's why our guests keep coming back. That's so, right. Um, Right here we have a beet carpaccio salad. It has a trio of, of beets, uh, a raspberry vinaigrette, wild, uh, sorry, baby kale, uh, goat cheese and candy pecans. Here we have pan seared diver scallops on a butternut squash uh, risotto, frizzled uh, Brussels sprouts, crispy shallots and a pancetta vinaigrette, Beautiful. which is one of my favorite dishes of all time. Mm -hmm. Uh, appetizers for a little starter. We have crispy jumbo lump crab cakes on a little Santa Fe uh, cream corn. Okay, work of art. I know little, it is, it is, yes. A little uh, baby frisée to kind of cut, a uh, little bitterness to kind of cut all the, the heaviness here and a piquillo uh, pepper uh, emulsion. Delicious. And the last and sort of my favorite is, again, we have a butternut squash uh, puree, uh, sauteed Swiss chard, a mesquite grilled filet, and then to top it off, we have a nice, juicy, seared piece of foie gras. I, I mean, that looks pretty amazing. In fact, I don't even want to cook anymore. I just want to come here and eat. Yeah, and we haven't even <laughs> moved on to dessert yet. Yo, don't worry. That's right in front of me, so. Uh, if you have a sweet tooth, our pastry chef, Ron Swart, is yes. an amazing, amazing chef. He is. Uh, so right here, he's offering a white chocolate Yule log with uh, Yule log chiffon cake with caramel sauce. And we have a cranberry uh, pear tart with a little bit of kiwi and raspberry sauce. Amazing. Gonna, Amazing. Chef, you've been here now for more than a year. Yeah, a little and, bit over a year now. And now you've done wonders with the menu. How is it Thank going? You. And just sort of, what do you, what do you sort of, what's your vision as you're preparing food here at Trump? I mean, uh, the food here is always unbelievable. I'm yeah. a big fan. Thank of you the very calamari. much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, the calamari is my favorite as well. Like it's a it's a staple. That's not going anywhere. Same with the fish and chips. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Trump's fish and chips. They yes. they they will be a staple. Uh, so over the past year, everything's been great. You know, big learning curves uh, left and right. Uh, we have, you know, got the kitchen under control, and now we're focusing on menu and new dishes and things like that. So, uh, it, you know, it's uh, it's exciting to finally get there. Yeah. Uh, so over the years, uh, we've grown uh, together as a team and as a, as a kitchen, and now it's time to focus on creating uh, new dishes for our guests to enjoy. When you look at, at foods that are kind of transformed for the holidays, what do people ask for? That's, you know, everyone's palate's different, especially during the holidays. Yeah. You know, everyone has their holiday favorites. Sure. Uh, I try to put on the menu sort of the, the cult classics, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, again, the angle for these new dishes for sort of uh, comfort food okay. and sort of a heartiness, you know. Looks with, comfortable to me. Uh, <laughs> even though California doesn't really get cold, it's the cooler weather that, yes. you know, sort of brings out that, that comfort food uh, need and uh, that people really want at this time of the year. So. You know, uh, that was the angle I sort of took. Okay. And people obviously have traditional foods. We all like to cook how we all grew up. I grew up in a Greek family, a lot of Greek pastry at this time of year. Yeah. And um, how about, I know you're I Italian. I grew up in an Italian family, so <laughs> lots of Italian cookies and the seven fish dinner for Christmas Eve yes. and things like that. So You're the Croatian boy. What do you got going yeah. on in your uh, house? Well, <laughs> uh, my favorites I, that I look forward to is my mom's sarma every year. Mm -hmm. That's that's her favorite dish to make. Uh, she's passed that recipe along to me, but mine still is not as good as hers. <laughs> Uh, so that's a work in progress. Uh, and we also have the, the big Christmas Eve party. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, big tradition. That's my favorite probably party of the year. Uh, it's all the family just cuts loose and we're just, yes. I mean, piles of seafood everywhere and we just uh, go to town. So. Yeah. And you talk about the comfort of food and the comfort of like when you're with family together and cooking together, it's amazing what that can do, you know, yes. just bringing people together. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes hand in hand when you're having a good time with your family and, and good food is just like a compliment. It's like the icing on the cake. And um, sometimes food's more enjoyable in that, in that scenario Absolutely. and situation. So uh, it's a win-win to me. So. You know, and it's funny because here at the holidays at Trump National, you're so busy, so do you get any time off? <laughs> At uh, this time of year, no. Not it's it's really. few and far between. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know they get time off any time of year. We were talking to <laughs> yeah. your general manager. She said two to three events a day. Yes. You know, you've got people here, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, brunch. I mean, it goes on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, it definitely keeps you busy, that's for sure. You definitely have, it's definitely a passionate driven uh, career. So um, this is my second family uh, yes, here. So I spend a lot of time and, with them. And we're part of your family. Absolutely. Because right, <laughs> you're feeding us. So we're part of your family <laughs> as well. We're together. <laughs> that's right. What is your favorite dish here? Do you have a favorite? Favorite? My favorite dish right now would have to be the scallop dish. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a good one. I it's love scallops. Uh, another favorite, again, it's a seafood dish, kind of an ode to home. Uh, I grew up in Seaside, Oregon, so I put a cedar plank salmon uh, on the menu. Nice. Uh, that's sort of what I kind of grew up with, so again, that's uh, a, a dish I lean towards. And 
this dish, yeah. um, the foie gras just sells it for me. Um, Marie, but I don't know if she's going to go oh, there. Listen, I feel so bad for people that are uh, not meat eaters. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. No, I need it all. No vegetarian here. <laughs> but we do have all. vegetarian options on the menu. So, yes, we uh, do. Yes. And we accommodate, Enjoy. We accommodate gluten-free, uh, vegetarian, lactose, all the, all the, the, the trends and Very things good. that people are sticking to. And I know that the menu is changing. So after the first of the year, you're going to actually do a demo for us. We're going to yes. come back and... Lots more fun stuff from Trump National. Absolutely. So yeah. this is just the first initial is, blast. Uh, the first quarter of next year, we'll be switching the menu up. Okay. Uh, got a few fun ideas that, that will uh, hopefully meet the needs of our clientele. Okay. As I'm over the past year, I've, I've learned my clientele a lot more. Okay. So it gives me a, a, a better uh, guide to, to offer, uh, or actually based on my creating and sure. stuff like that, to okay. uh, what our, our guests really like and what they really want. Very nice. Well, I think Lizzie and I, it's time to get that fork I, I out. My, clip, my <laughs> clipboard's <laughs> turning into my place now. <laughs> and I'm going to do a rumble for this. I know. Should we just, we should try? I think we should taste. Well, I got to sauce this real oh, quick for you. Oh, look at he's going to sauce that. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. I never have enough so. sauce. <laughs> or whatever. It's, it's okay, what are you going to taste first, Liz? Well, I'm, 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 I love looking at that. It's making me feel festive. Look at the red, the green. It's so It's gorgeous. beautiful. I'm going to go with a little of the beet salad. Okay. I know. I love Brussels sprouts, Liz. They're so good. I love them. It's like Brussels sprouts have become like the superfood. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It's a, it's a big trend, but the trend has a, a, a backing because they're delicious. That, uh -huh. That's why. And they're, and they're super healthy for you, uh, depending on how you cook them. Uh, if you fry them <laughs> or add bacon, they're not as healthy, but still delicious. Uh, as a kid, I, I couldn't touch them, but now I love them. I wouldn't either. When do you think that sort of changed? It's, I think as you grow older, I, your palate uh, becomes more established. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the only th weight I can put on that theory. Uh, I didn't like mushrooms as well as a kid, and I love them now. Good thing we all I, grow up, huh? I know. Um, you know, I, as I'm enjoying uh -huh. this, is incredible. Candied pecans, nuts at the holidays. They're great gifts to My give favorite. people. Do you have, can you give us the 30 second version of how do you do nuts, so especially delicious. if you want to do them for gifts and things like that? They're pretty uh, simple. Yeah, they are simple. Uh, the candy nuts, so basically you would take some egg whites, you would froth them um, uh, till they, they stand up with a little bit of sugar. You're gonna take your, your whole pecans, you're gonna toss them into those egg whites, and then you're gonna sprinkle them with sugar enough to coat and then you bake them at 350. Um, you can season them with any sort of flavorings you want, so nutmeg, allspice, cloves, uh, cinnamon, uh, ginger, Love them. all of that. Um, you can add to the sugar um, as once you add it to the egg whites to coat the nut, um, and then bake it at 350 for roughly 15, 20 minutes, and uh, should have a pretty perfect candy nut. And you need to package these up and put them in a gift. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that'd the, be good. That's funny you would say a gift idea because yeah, a little mason jar or a little bow around oh, it. Yeah. I mean, it's Easy. a it's a win win. Happy holidays again to you, Marie. I Same love you, you and I'm grateful for just all that we have. And this is a time to be with family and friends and do all we can for each other. Absolutely. And thank all of you for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And we'll see you around the peninsula. Happy holidays.